Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kevin and today I'm going to show you guys how to transition your plants that are living in soil into LECA and passive hydroponics. I am going to preface this by saying that I am no expert. Um, I'm just going based on what I've you know, researched and what has worked for me. So the things that you will need before you go ahead and do this are LECA, which also goes by the name Hydroton or Clay Balls. What I would recommend first before using LECA is uh, rinsing it off there's a bunch of dust that does accumulate um, when you first get it and then i would soak it in water for at least 24 hours this gives the leka the chance to soak up um, any water and it'll make it easier for your plants roots to have access to water the second thing that you will need is a pot with holes or a net pot so you can use just a normal nursery pot i'm using this plastic pot that I got from Ikea and a container or a pot with no drainage holes just so it could hold on to the nutrient solution and um, act as a nutrient reservoir. I'm going to use these two pots here but you could also use um, self-watering pots. I have the majority of my collection in these self-watering pots so they're not necessarily made for passive hydroponics and LECA but as you can see you have the catcher pot here. You have this wick that goes into the net I guess net pot and it wicks up water into the LECA and therefore into the plant's roots. The third thing that you'll need are nutrients for your nutrient solution. There are so many brands out there, but I use the General Hydroponic uh, three-part series and I'm not going to get into how I mix it. Oh, my laundry's done. Anyways, I'm not gonna get into how I mix my nutrient solution, but one of the key things that you need to make sure is that the nutrient solution's pH is between 5.5 to 6.5. This range is usually the range that plants like to live in, and um, it's it has to do with the ability for certain nutrients to be absorbed by the roots and the plant, essentially. And what you need to measure that is either a pH um, tester over here or an electronic uh, pH test meter I think is that what they're called anyways I've already tested this this is at a happy 5.5 so yeah I feel like I'm forgetting something but we're just gonna jump into it now I forgot to mention the plant that I am transitioning into passive hydroponics this is the philodendron pastazanum. Oh, it's so pretty. Anyhow, I got this plant a couple weeks ago, let it acclimate a little bit, and now I'm going to transition it into passive hydroponics. Usually when I buy a new plant, I don't tend to transition it right away, uh, just because you could put the plant in more shock. But since it seems to be happy, are you happy? Since it's happy in my environment, I'm just going to transition it. How I usually do this, I put a plastic bag into my sink. I don't want that much soil going down the drain. And I basically just try my best to loosen the loots. Loosen the loots, that's a new one. Loosen the root. It's not even that. Loosen the soil from the roots. That's what I mean to say. Um, yeah, so I'll just show you, just kind of squeeze the edges here, and then I kind of just pour it here. Ooh. Okay. So I like to just kind of tease the soil and roots a little bit. I just try to get the the vast majority of soil off of the roots before I rinse them off. This part is the part I hate the most. Um, <laughs> it's very messy, it's time consuming, and yeah, I'm not, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm not a huge fan of soil, hence why I transitioned all my plants to passive hydroponics. So right off the bat, I can tell that these roots are healthy, which is fantastic. I didn't really have <laughs> down in my mind okay so that's the best 
that I can do for now. Um, I'm just going to clean up a little bit, get rid of the bag, and then I'm going to run the faucet just over the roots just to get rid of any excess soil. I don't know if y'all could see that. Another thing, guys, you will lose a bunch of roots when you do this. Um, depending how how, mu how much the roots are just clinging on to the soil or whatever substrate it's in, I find that sphagnum moss is like a real like, pain to get off of roots. Okay, and so what you would do, you would take the leka, which I have right over here, and you would just put about a third way up the pot. Obviously, it depends on how big the root system is. Um, and then you would just kind of put it into the pot. Then I kind of just trickle a bunch of leka onto the top. This is a horrible angle. I'm sorry, y'all. So as you can see, it's all covered. Um, I usually take the pot, I do a little bit of a slam against the counter <laughs> just to make sure the leka kind of gets around the roots. Cute. And I mean, it looks cute. Okay, so from here, what you need to do is to take your nutrient solution and you want to pour it over just until it hits about a third ways up. I could kind of see through the space here and we're not there yet. Okay, we're there. All you need to do is put this plant in a, you know, in where, oh my gosh, I'm dropping everything. <laughs> what you need to do is just place this plant in a, I find a place with high humidity and a lot of bright and direct light usually does the trick and reduces the stress on the plant. So again, guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see progress on this plant, please let me know. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Sorry, guys, turning on the camera again because I forgot to mention um, once you have your plant, you should change the nutrient solution every two weeks. Um, this can change depending where your plant lives. So some people do every week. Some people do every three weeks. I do a lovely medium of every two weeks. Okay. I think that was it. Bye guys. <laughs>